two Jokers, three Greek weddings, and how many Spider-Men? These upcoming sequels have a lot to keep track of. Warning, this video contains fast flashing images. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for those with photosensitive epilepsy. Roger Ebert hailed the original This Is Spinal Tap as one of the funniest movies ever made. The 1984 mockumentary tells the story of fading band Spinal Tap desperately searching for musical glory in a world that's forgotten them. And the whole time, they're being filmed by the not-so-talented documentarian Marty DeBerge, played by the film's actual director, Rob Reiner. With its so terrible they're amazing songs and its improvised jokes, it's no wonder Spinal Tap became an instant classic. Now, Reiner is getting the band back together. Original stars Michael McKeon, Christopher Guest, and Harry Shearer will be picking up their guitars and rocking around Stonehenge in the film's upcoming sequel, scheduled for release in 2024, right in time for the original's 40th anniversary. Reiner will return as both the film's director and de Bergy. Stage, but it's very, very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. Look, here's hoping they can turn this sequel up to 11. Valak is back, baby. The demonic nun, who's been haunting the Conjuring universe ever since the second film in the franchise, is getting her very own sequel. The nun terrorized audiences back in 2018, scaring up a whopping $365 million across the globe. And whether you're a Hollywood producer or a malignant evil entity, money talks. Speaking of malignant, Akila Cooper, the screenwriter behind James Wan's absolutely bonkers 2021 thriller, is going to pen the script for The Nun too. If she can bring the same wild energy to Valak's tale that she brought to Gabriel's, then this next installment in The Conjuring franchise will be something special indeed. There's no word yet on the plot or release date, but we're waiting with bated, terrified breath. The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It director, Michael Shaves, will helm the sequel, which will take place in 1950s France and see Sister Irene face off with Valak. Bonnie Ahrens is set to reprise her role as the demonic villain, and according to Collider, Thaisa Farmiga will be back as Sister Irene. 2019's Joker takes a daring new approach to Batman's most famous adversary, as inspired by gritty 70s cinema as it is by comic books. Joaquin Phoenix plays Arthur Fleck, a troubled wannabe comedian who suffers an emotional breakdown on the way to becoming the clownish supervillain. Phoenix won an Academy Award for his performance, and Joker earned more than $1 billion at the box office. Clearly, there's significant demand for additional movies about the Joker's rise to infamy. According to The Hollywood Reporter, director Todd Phillips discussed tackling more DC Comics movies mere days after Joker debuted. In June 2022, Phillips cemented rumors of a sequel when he posted a photo of the next Joker script to Instagram. The snapshot revealed that the film will be titled Joker Folia Du. Folia Du is a psychological term referring to a delusion shared by multiple people, which might suggest a team-up, the introduction of other villains, or a citywide revolt. Pop star turned Oscar-nominated actor Lady Gaga is slated to play Harley Quinn in the film, which is rumored to be a musical. According to Variety, it will dance its way into theaters on October 4, 2024. A dazzlingly original film full of humor, action, comic book theatrics, and heart, 2018's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse earned $375 million at the global box office, took home an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, and became one of the most critically acclaimed superhero movies ever made. All that, plus an endlessly repeatable premise, Miles Morales travels through the multiverse and meets other spider beings, made a sequel very likely. A follow-up was officially announced in November 2019, with Christopher Miller and Phil Lord returning to the writing team, along with the new director Joaquim Dos Santos and screenwriter David Callahan. Kemp Powers and Justin K. Thompson will join Dos Santos as co-directors. The upcoming sequel will examine Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy's growing relationship, which will deepen from friendship into romance. In June 2022, Sony Pictures Animation's Twitter account announced they, and the film's other heroes, will face the spot voiced by Jason Schwartzman. This interdimensional baddie is able to sprint through the multiverse at incredible speed. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was initially set to hit theaters in April 2022, but Sony pushed the release to June 2nd, 2023, and split the film in two. The third installment, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, arrives on March 29th, 2024. In 2002, My Big Fat Greek Wedding was a massive, unexpected pop culture phenomenon. The flick began as Nia Vardalos' semi-autobiographical one-woman show, which became a surprising hit. 
The more bizarre it is in the movie, the more likely it is to be actually pulled from my true life. Actor and producer Rita Wilson loved it, and soon enough, so did her husband, Tom Hanks. A few years later, they co-produced the film adaptation, which was quietly released in April 2002. It became a blockbuster that grossed $368 million worldwide, making it the highest-earning romantic comedy of all time. My Big Fat Greek Wedding led to CBS sitcom My Big Fat Greek Life and a movie sequel, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. He's looking. Act like we're having fun. One, two, three. <laughs> In June 2022, Vardalos announced on Instagram that filming had wrapped on location in Greece for My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. She'll be directing as well as reprising the role of Tula Portokalos. According to Us Weekly, other original cast members have been seen around set, including John Corbett, Elena Kamporis, Andrea Martin, Louis Mandalore, and Maria Vakratzis. A third sequel to Ghostbusters, the 1984 mega-hit starring comedy icons Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, and Rick Moranis has been on the table for decades. According to Esquire and Tor, Aykroyd had ambitious plans, but they never panned out. Instead, fans got a reboot with 2016's Ghostbusters, which features a whole new set of spirit-trapping scientists played by Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, and Melissa McCarthy. That film's middling box office returns and just okay critical reviews ensured any sequels to its take never came to pass. And so, Sony rebooted Ghostbusters once more with 2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife. Set in the world of the original two Ghostbusters films, with cameos from living cast members and appearances from characters like Egon Spangler's daughter and grandchildren, the film was a hit at the relatively subdued COVID-era box office, prompting Sony to order a sequel. Jason Reitman, director of Ghostbusters Afterlife and son of original Ghostbusters Helmer, Ivan Reitman, will return to direct. As the end sequence of Ghostbusters Afterlife suggests, the film will take place in New York City, just like the 80s Ghostbusters films, and is set to release December 20th, 2023. With a roughly $200 million price tag, The Gray Man is one of the most expensive movies Netflix has ever made. The streaming-only title boasts an all-star cast in Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, and Ryan Gosling. Gosling anchors the action thriller as Six, an elite CIA operative who runs for his life after revealing highly classified state secrets. You hurt? I mean, my ego's a little bruised. Netflix hadn't released viewership numbers for the film's opening weekend when it announced the sequel. Gosling and directors Joe and Anthony Russo will return for the second film, though screenwriters Stephen McFeely and Christopher Marcus shared writing duties with Joe Russo for the first movie, McFeely will go it alone for the second. A Grey Man spin-off is also in the works, with Deadpool and Zombieland writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick taking a crack at the screenplay. 2021's Nobody stars unlikely action hero Bob Odenkirk. Best known for his performance as Saul Goodman on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, as seemingly unassuming dad, Hutch Mansell. When his mundane life is upended by Russian mobsters, Hutch must revisit the skills he cultivated as an assassin. Nobody was a rare hit of the COVID-19 era. In August 2022, director David Leach told Collider another film was in the works. Everyone involved is like, full steam ahead. We are in the script process, the studio loved the results, and it's happening as fast as we can make it happen. While Hocus Pocus failed to make much of a splash when it was first released in 1993, it has since become a Halloween staple, with new fans discovering the witchy wackiness of the Sanderson sisters each year. The film follows a group of kids who accidentally resurrect the three sisters, who were executed in 1693. Thrilled to be back, the sisters set about to suck away the soul of every child in Salem to stay alive, unless the children who resurrected them, plus an enchanted cat, can stop them. Original Hocus Pocus stars Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker are back for the sequel and seeking revenge. Also making an appearance in Hocus Pocus 2 are Doug Jones of The Shape of Water, Hannah Waddingham of Ted Lasso, and Sam Richardson of Beep. With a script by Jen D'Angelo, Hocus Pocus 2 will be directed by Ann Fletcher. Prepare for all sorts of witchy fun on Disney Plus on September 30th, 2022. The original Clerks, released in 1994, follows a pair of jaded, pop culture-obsessed friends who work in a New Jersey grocery and video store, respectively, shot for just $27,575 and paid for with writer-director Kevin Smith's credit cards. The film became a cult classic. It launched Smith's career as one of the preeminent filmmakers of his generation and master of the view a universe of interconnected movies, which includes Mallrats, Dogma, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, 
and Clerks 2, the 2006 sequel, which finds the characters suffering through low-paying, low-status jobs at a fast-food restaurant. Smith suffered a heart attack in 2019. Grappling with issues of life, death, and legacy inspired him to write Clerks 3, which will tell his own story through the film's characters. It goes like this. After nearly dying of a heart attack, Randall teams up with fellow clerk Dante to make a low-budget indie movie about their lives called Clerks. I'm living on borrowed time. No more watching movies. I'm gonna make a movie! The first trailer for Clerks 3 hit the internet in July 2022, featuring returning cast members and frequent Smith collaborators Jason Mewes, Rosario Dawson, and Justin Long. The film will hit theaters via special event screenings running from September 13th, 2022 to September 18th, 2022. That's how we did it in the 90s, son!